Hotels are places where you know for sure lots of people stay every day. And not all of those places pay attention to cleanliness as much as they should. There can be bed bugs and other pests around that you won't notice until it's too late. So here's the deal. When you arrive at a hotel and open your room, don't rush to open your bags and put all your clothes onto the shelves, and especially the bed. Better place your bags into the bathtub for the time being and go check the room for those pesky bugs. Check out all the rugs, soft furniture, cushions, and all other places that pests could live in. Only after you've done that, take your bags out of the bathtub and unpack. The bathtub is the safest place because no bugs are able to survive there. So naturally, none of them will crawl into your stuff while you're not looking. You may want to throw that comforter on the floor at once, by the way. While sheets may be cleaned regularly, the comforters are not. Some hotels wash them every week or so, but others don't even bother. Same goes for your bedding. Most high-end hotels will change the sheets daily, but a lot of budget ones don't change the pillows or bedding after a guest checks out. Definitely a good idea to request fresh pillowcases when you arrive. It's also best not to drink out of that glass in the bathroom, as many glasses aren't cleaned properly. Some workers even use disinfectant or furniture polish to get the glasses looking spotless. Ever wondered why they never use fitted sheets in hotels? They might be convenient, but they're impractical for hotel use. The sheets are changed much more often than you do it at home, and the elastic becomes worn out all too soon. Besides, it's a nightmare to store fitted sheets. They have to be of two different sizes, one for either type of bed. It's just easier to take two universal flat sheets per double bed and get on with it. Speaking of sheets, you must have noticed that bed linen and towels in hotels are almost always white. The first reason is convenience, of course. When everything is white, it's easy to wash it all together and use bleach to get rid of any possible stains. The second explanation, however, is customer experience. According to public polls, people perceive a white color as luxurious and fresh, which makes their stay more pleasant. If you see an unusually attractive wow. price for a room on a website, be careful. It might not include a mandatory resort fee. If you have an option to pay for a room in advance, you'll see the final cost at the checkout. It'll normally list the initial price you saw before booking and all the extra charges, resort fee included. If you decide to pay at the hotel, though, you might be up for a surprise when you check out, so always make sure to read the fine print. You may have seen a rather weird thing in many hotels, a phone in the bathroom, especially just next to the toilet. You'd probably be surprised to know that it's an actual requirement for hotels to receive a four diamond rating from AAA. But this also makes pretty good sense. For example, if you slip and fall on the wet floor of the bathroom, a phone can be handy to call for help. Returning to bathrooms, hotels typically don't provide plungers in rooms. You see, hotels want you to have a feeling that you're the first person ever to enter the room you're staying in. It's a question of your comfort, which is the primary concern of any respectable hotel. And a plunger in the bathroom, according to anonymous polls, makes people think that the toilet may malfunction at some point, which doesn't help the image. If your hotel has card keys with magnetic strips, make sure you put your card key apart from your cell phone and wallet. The problem is that key cards are rewritten quite a lot, and they're designed for that process to be quick and easy. So a fairly strong magnet, like the one in your cell phone, could erase your key card, and you wouldn't be able to get inside your room. The hotel will surely provide you with a new card, but that's still inconvenient. Many hotels only accept credit cards as a form of payment, and without one, you won't be able to book a room directly or use the paid services provided by the place. Booking a room is just the first step of your stay at a hotel. During your vacation or business trip, you might use the mini bar or other paid services that you'll only have to pay for at the checkout. If your debit card doesn't have enough funds on it to cover all your expenses, the hotel has no means to get their money apart from suing you. If you pay with a credit card, however, all the additional costs go to the bank, and everyone's happy. The time of check-in and check-out is fixed not to annoy you. It's done so you don't barge in onto guests who stayed in the room you booked, and the hotel staff can clean the room and prepare it for the next guest's arrival. By the way, 
The checkout time is normally about 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. because hotels actually care about your well-being. They not only let you have your breakfast, but also give you some time to prepare for departure without hurry. Isn't it kind of annoying that many hotels don't have a socket near the bed? In fact, time is to blame in this case. Lots of hotels around the world were built before mobile phones and other portable devices became so popular and widespread. Back then, of course, they didn't need bedside sockets, and many of them haven't yet caught up with the times. You can avoid this issue if you stay at a hotel that's been built relatively recently. Once you're at the check-in desk, it's likely that the hotel staff already recognize you. Many hotels, especially higher-end ones, will do a little research of their guests' social media. While this seems a bit creepy, it's only so they can see who you are to make your stay more comfortable. At check-in, you'll also be given an initial key which will reset the door lock and cancel any existing keys. But make sure to be respectful to your receptionists. Sometimes, they may play practical jokes on rude customers by key bombing. This is where they give you two of the initial keys. Either key resets the door, so once you use the second one, the first will no longer work. Toothpaste is one item you probably won't find in the hotel room's bathroom. For budget hotels, it's often too expensive to order, as it's classified as a medical supply. For luxury hotels, it's the opposite. They often can't find a toothpaste manufacturer that's fancy enough to be present in their rooms. While the staff clean hotel rooms frequently, disinfecting smaller items is not on the top of their priority list. Remote controls and phones are some of the dirtiest things in a hotel room. So do yourself a favor and bring some disinfectant wipes to clean them before use. If you're thinking about putting your valuables in the safe for security, you may also want to think twice. Hotel locks use passcodes instead of locks, so there's a high chance someone in the hotel will know the master code. And who knows who else could get their hands on this information. Hotels usually overbook themselves, as the average daily no-show rate is around 10%. This means there's a chance that you won't actually get your reserved room. If you show up and there are no available rooms, chances are you'll get walked. This basically means the hotel will pay for a room at another similar hotel in the area. There's a surprising amount of items left in rooms that hotels don't want you to know about. In one hotel in Portugal, a worker even found a shark that was left behind. With no idea how it ended up there, the shark was eventually returned to its natural habitat, safe and sound. Most, if not all, hotels have fully carpeted floors, and there's a couple of very good reasons for that. First of all, it's your safety. You're far less likely to slip and fall on a carpet than on a wooden or tiled floor. Secondly, it's much more cost-effective because it's faster and cheaper to replace a spoiled carpet than change the whole flooring in a room. And finally, Carpets add to the room's soundproofing, which you'll be thankful for if you have overly active neighbors. Ever wondered what a continental breakfast is and why it's called that? In fact, the name comes from the UK, which is a group of islands, and it means a breakfast that's served in continental Europe. It may include pastries, sliced bread with different toppings, meat, cheese, fruit juice, and hot beverages. Now, flying has long become routine for many people. But even frequent flyers sometimes don't know about things you should never do on a plane. Ooh. No bare feet on a plane. It's one of the biggest no-nos of air travel. Even if we omit the topic of unpleasant odors. Phew. The airplane floor is extremely filthy. People with contagious foot problems might have been walking the aisles barefoot before you. There's likely to be a lot of dirt left after previous passengers. And don't even get me started on the floor in the laboratories. Ew. If your feet need some freedom, take off your shoes, but at least wear your socks. Or bring along a pair of light slippers. Keep in mind that the pressurized air in the passenger cabin is just as dry as it is in the Sahara Desert, with only about 20% humidity. That's why your skin may feel discomfort after a flight. Mm. But wouldn't it make more sense to install several humidifiers that could add some moisture? But this extra load would cost airlines lots of money. Plus, the plane's airframe is mostly made of aluminum and other metals, and humid air could lead to corrosion. So, don't forget to bring a moisturizer and use it during the flight. Always secure your tray table as soon as the plane starts moving on the tarmac. 
and never lower it during the takeoff and landing. It's a security measure, which ensures that you and the other passengers will have a clear pathway in case of an emergency evacuation. Also, keep your seat in an upright position during takeoff and landing. First of all, a reclined seat can seriously slow down an emergency evacuation, since it will block a person sitting behind. What's more, the more backward you're leaning, the harder it is to get into the brace position during an emergency landing. Now try to avoid snoozing during or right after takeoff and landing. For one thing, it's not the best thing for your health. The main problem is that the air pressure inside the cabin changes very quickly during these phases of the flight. This, in turn, affects the air pressure in your ears. It's important to be alert during this time to relax and open up your ears, for example by yawning or swallowing frequency. Chewing gum works for me. If you're sleeping, you can't do this, which can lead to permanent damage. And of course, there's a safety issue. Most accidents happen during takeoff and landing. If you're sleeping during these stages, you might not be alert and conscious enough if an emergency happens. Now, this next recommendation comes from the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. According to them, you might want to skip on hot drinks on a plane. The water used to make tea or coffee doesn't come from bottles, it's regular tap water. And water tanks on airplanes are often old and full of bacteria. In 2004, there was a study which found that more than 12% of water samples contained harmful bacteria. But if you still decide to have a cup of hot beverage on a plane, never pour coffee or tea on your own. Flight attendants are trained to handle this task in crowded aisles of a moving airplane and won't accidentally burn you or other passengers. Now, it's probably better if you don't order Coke on a plane. The cabin pressure so low up in the air causes a lot of foam. For apparent reasons, flight attendants don't want to serve you a cup filled with froth. That's why they'll fill only half the cup, then wait for the bubbles to settle, and then finish pouring. That can take ages. Keep your air vent open. This way, you'll minimize the spread of germs. Planes have high-quality air filters. They'll catch up to 99% of all airborne germs, so you should be safe there. But make sure to wipe that tray table. With 8 times more bacteria than the toilet flush button, it's the dirtiest place on board. Another thing you should avoid is leaning your head on the window if you have a window seat. You never know who occupied your seat before you, and in any case, the glass is likely to be covered with germs. Say no to backless sandals and high heels on a flight. I do. There are very serious safety reasons for such a request. The first is that both these types of footwear make it very difficult to evacuate the aircraft fast. If you wear high heels, you will anyway have to leave them behind in case the crew is using emergency slides during an evacuation. The heels are very likely to damage the slide, so off they go. Now ask yourself, do you really fancy running away from the airplane barefoot? I'll answer that for you. Nope. Instead, wear sturdy shoes with a solid sole. In this case, you won't find yourself standing on the hot tarmac or in the weeds without any footwear at all. Don't stuff heavy objects into overhead compartments. Your things may not stay inside during severe turbulence. And while falling out, they will injure you and other passengers. Ow! That's why if it feels difficult to lift something into the overhead compartment, better put it under the seat in front of you or elsewhere. Now, don't blame the pilots for the hard landing. When you experience it in bad weather, it might be intentional. If the runway is covered with water or snow, the plane has to touch down hard in order to break the water layer and prevent aquaplaning. Otherwise, the water can perform the role of a lubricant, and the plane won't be able to break or respond to any control. Deploying an emergency slide when there's no emergency is a bad, very bad idea. It can cause hour-long delays and cost airlines thousands of dollars to pack the undamaged slide back into its container. Why would someone do it? Apparently, some think it'll help them get off the plane faster. Well, they're an idiot. Don't be one yourself. Just keep in mind that it doesn't work this way. Don't ignore the instructions of the cabin crew to open window shades during takeoff and landing. This way, flight attendants can see what's happening outside, assess the situation, and act fast, organizing the evacuation. For example, if there's a fire outside one exit, they will redirect passengers toward another door. Avoid carrying spray deodorants or shaving cream in your carry-on baggage. 
Both these things tend to explode mid-flight and therefore aren't allowed on board the airplane. A much better idea is to choose stick deodorants. You also mustn't keep power banks in your checked luggage. And if you want to bring one on board, its capacity shouldn't be more than 20,000 milliamps. Besides, you shouldn't use them during the flight since they might catch fire. In general, lithium batteries are safe to use, but since they're high energy, they can catch fire if they're not treated with care, misused, or if there's a manufacturing fault. Such batteries have been the cause of quite a few fires on board airplanes, as well as during ground handling. Do not worry about airport scanners, they won't harm your health. Otherwise, airport employees wouldn't be able to stay near them without special clothing. Even when you're passing by a baggage scanner, the risk is minimal. And the last one, don't act like a jerk on board. Behave yourself. I know you will. Also, never try to land a plane on your own. Nah, don't laugh. I'm not kidding. In movies, they often show us that something happens to the pilots and they can't land the plane. And that's when the main character, a very skillful person, starts their game. Unfortunately, it's close to impossible to do it in real life. Even if a person is a genius, is fond of computer simulators that match the real model of an aircraft 100%, and is ready to follow all the instructions from the ground, they're likely to fail due to one simple aspect – stress. It is true that there have been cases throughout history when amateurs landed smallish private planes after the incapacitation of a pilot. However, there has never been a case of a non-professional pilot landing a commercial passenger airplane. It's only in the movies. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. If you're going on vacation, I'm sure you forgot to pack a couple of useful items, like a crayon or a pillowcase. I have collected the best travel tips for your ultimate vacation. You should carefully think about when you are planning to go somewhere. In case you have some kind of flexibility, just forget about going on a trip in July. You don't need to travel during the busy season. It's too expensive and there are way too many people. The best time to travel is during the shoulder season, which is between the high and low seasons. In Greece, for example, it's April and May in September, October. The weather is already or still great, but there are fewer people and the accommodation is way cheaper. When searching for flights, always do it in incognito mode. If you do it in the regular mode, the saved cookie files will track your searches, and cheaper flights will be less likely to pop up since you've been searching for a while. Don't give yourself away. Always go incognito. Another trick is to pick a different home country and currency, the one with a better exchange rate. This way you can buy tickets in different currencies that will be way cheaper. Next, when buying the ticket, make a flyer account, no matter the airline you travel with. Airlines gift you miles, and when enough, you can get a free flight. Even if you travel with different airlines, there is no need to miss out on an opportunity. And yes, don't dispose of your plane ticket after the trip until you saw that your miles were posted on your flyer account. Also, if you ever need to cancel a non-refundable ticket, just don't cancel it and don't show up. In case something happens and the flight gets canceled, you will get your money back because no one knew you weren't going to fly anyways. As for picking the seats, if you fly with someone, Don't pick the seats next to each other. Keep the middle seat between you, and there will be a higher probability that it won't be booked unless the plane is full. If you're lucky, you'll have three seats for the two of you. But if you end up getting a neighbor, you can just ask them to switch seats with you so that one of you can sit next to each other with whoever you're traveling with. Most people will be happy to switch. If you have a long layover, use it to your advantage. Six hours layovers aren't cool. Too long to chill in the airport, but too short to get out. In this case, better opt for longer layovers and use them to explore the city before your next flight. If you're booking a hotel, always join their loyalty program. Just like with plane tickets, it won't hurt, but you will still be treated like a special guest. Also, when checking in, ask for an opportunity for an upgrade. You can get a better room for the same price and always make sure to let the hotel know if there's any special occasion. Like a honeymoon, anniversary, birthday, or anything, you'll probably end up with some nice perks from the hotel staff. Even though websites for hotel search are cool to use, once you pick the hotel, just call them directly for booking. Websites take fees for posting offers, so everything that appears there will be more expensive. Call the hotel directly to book a room, and you'll get it for cheaper. But don't feel limited by hotels. Airbnbs are a great option, and often you can get luxurious places for cheap. Also, if you don't mind hostels, they can be fun too. 
You can meet and befriend travelers from other countries, and maybe you can even stay at their place if you ever go to their country. Now off to packing. First off, always make a packing checklist and keep it on your phone. It's hard to remember everything you need right away, so put together the list in a couple of days and add another item as soon as you remember it. This way, you don't forget anything important when packing. To fit more stuff in your suitcase, roll your clothes. This way, they take way less space. Roll all the shampoos and other things that can spill over in a shower cap. This way, even if something explodes, everything inside will still be protected. Also, use packing cubes. They help to organize everything and save a lot of space. Learn to organize your stuff efficiently. A Tic Tac box can be a good storage for bobby pins, and they'll all be in place. Use a carbine to keep all hair ties together. Have you packed a pillowcase? You should. It doesn't take much space, but in case you get uncomfortable when traveling, you can just stock the pillowcase with some clothes. Voila! You got yourself a pillow. Also, put a dryer sheet inside your suitcase. This way your clothes will smell nice, even on long trips. Don't forget to make a copy of your passport and carry it in your wallet just in case. And you can also have a scanned copy of it on the cloud. Another good item to keep is a power bank. Those outlets in airports and airplanes don't always work. Also, get a crayon. It'll be handy if you need to write something down. Pens don't work well in planes because of the air pressure, and pencils break. A crayon will always be there for you. Also, a clothespin is another little thing you might want to have. You know when you arrive and want to keep your toothbrush from touching any counters? If you attach the pin to it, it can serve as a stand. Another little but useful thing is a bread clip. Those serve so many purposes. You can use it as a bookmark, attach it to the end of the tape roll, or keep in place your rolled cords in. But most importantly, they are a must for your flip-flops. The V-shaped part often comes out through it. To avoid it, just slip the bread clip underneath the bottom. It'll serve as a plug stopper, and your flip-flops will last. What to wear? Of course, comfort is the first priority. Sweatpants and leggings are way more comfortable than jeans. A comfy jacket will ensure you don't get cold. A fringe scarf is nice to have too. They're fancy and they turn into a cover. Also, make sure you're wearing compression socks. They will spare you from feeling swollen during the trip. Another important part of your outfit could be noise-canceling headphones. They will be a game-changer if there happens to be a screaming little human on the plane. And an ultimate trick, mark your luggage as fragile, even if there's nothing fragile in there. This way, it'll be treated better and your luggage will come out in the first batch after the flight. Most people either sleep or surf their phones while traveling, but some travelers can even play board games. But if you need to roll a dice, here comes a problem. If you roll it not carefully enough, you might end up either losing it or crawling under the seats looking for it, which is inconvenient. Just keep the dice in a little transparent plastic container, then shake the container and see what you got. To find cool places to visit, go on social media, check out photos and videos people post from your location, and go to any place that caught your attention. Pickpockets are definitely a thing, but there is a trick. Just make your valuables less attractive to them. Do you have an expensive camera? Put some tape on it as if you fixed it, and the pickpockets will think that it's broken. Do the same with your phone and laptops and whatever else you don't want to be stolen. Have you ever ended up with a bunch of foreign coins after your trip that are totally useless? Some coins and bills are cool to keep from trips as souvenirs, but too much is too bothersome. To avoid it, just donate your leftover coins before you leave the country. A good deed and also less weight in your pockets on your way home. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.